Hey, everybody, it's Bill here. I'm back, okay? And this is uh, my lessons learned uh, video from the Arizona Trail. Uh, I finished it a few weeks ago. It's about 800 miles from Mexico to Utah, and it goes through the Grand Canyon, and just beautiful, beautiful environment. Um, it's wilderness camping. Uh, there are days you go, you don't see anybody. It's, an, it's not like the Eastern Corridor tra trails, like the Appalachian Trail and the Long Trail. Uh, it's just, that's, that's the way it is. It's a whole different experience, exactly what I wanted. People of Arizona were uh, just amazing. It was just beautiful. It was wonderful. And uh, first shout out is to the trail angels who deliver water to the um, uh, trailheads. Without you, this this, this would be would be hard. This is the, one of the driest seasons in history uh, down there, and a lot of the water sources, which are stock ponds, which are nothing more than the depression that's man-made, uh, where water kind of seeps in, uh, were, were were dried up. Um, and gut hooks app would have them, and they, you'd get there and there'd be nothing there. So then you got to go another 12 miles. You're carrying a liter, two liters of water, and it's freaking 82 degrees in the sun, and there's no shade. So without you guys. God bless you, and thank you so much. It, it means so much to us all. All right? So the first thing I'm going to talk about is water, okay? I, I brought a lot of new equipment, um, and I, I, I shake down, hiked with it, and I tested it before I went. Um, and this is kind of the result of, you know, five weeks of actually using it in the field, okay? The first thing I did was I, a new water filter. Instead of using the, the water, a water bladder in my pack, which is about two-liter water bottle with the hydration hose that came up and drank, and using gravity to, to filter it, using a Sawyer squeeze, okay? I switched to two smart water bottles and I brought a bag for dirty water for dry camping at night, which I did almost every single night, okay? Which is the way to go, and I'm gonna do that from now on. But I used this Hydra Blue, okay? This is a, a different version. It was basically a competitor to the Mini, Mini Sawyer, okay? The difference is it's, it's, it's longer, okay? And that's more, more filament. That's the big difference. It's also lighter, it's a little bit lighter than this, and about an ounce lighter than this. And uh, the thing about it, though, and a lesson learned here, is um, it requires a lot of purging. And when I say a lot of purging, the water sources uh, in on the Arizona Trail are full of silt, cow poop, and everything else. Mud, you name it, right? Uh, so this thing is doing yeoman's work by catching all this stuff and keeping you healthy, okay, which is great. However, um, when you put on a bottle and you start sucking through it or you start squeezing through it, um, it's gonna take uh, it's gonna take some time, okay? Uh, not not nearly not nearly as 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 hard as this. This is probably 50% better than this, and it's probably you know 75% of this. Uh, this um, my is my go-to filter. Uh, this was the, I was trying this. Going forward, I'm, I'm gonna be continuing to use my solar squeeze. I, this thing you can go three or four days. I hiked with somebody for more than half of it, and he used to squeeze, and he would wait till town to, 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 to purge, and I was purging every day. Um, it just was a little frustrating, and it just took away from the joy of it. Uh, but you know what? I tried it, and it worked, and I'm healthy, okay? I also brought uh, the Aquamira drops. I was gonna use them, but you know what? This was so fast and easy, and I liked having the water this right on the water bottle. I had a smart water bottle with this on it, which I would squeeze, into like a Dasani water bottle for electrolytes. So I put my electrolytes in there and that was always my clean water bottle, okay? So I'd have this on there and what I liked about it was when I passed water sources when they were more frequent and the water got warm, I would just dump it and get some more and quickly just start drinking. So I love that and um, I'm gonna still do that with my, even with my Sawyer. I just put a, instead of using this top, I'll use a smart water bottle top because this is kind of, you just get your hand, this is hard when you're, when you're your hands get on it, it's dirty, it's, you don't want to do that. So the smart water bottles pop and you drink and you go, right? So that's the water, um, and that worked well. The next thing is the tent structure, the shelter. I used a Big Agnes Fly Creek UL HV, high volume UL1, and before that I was using the, the Copper Spur uh, UL1, and the Fly Creek is my go-to tent going forward. It, it is exactly what, the way it's, it's marketed, uh, whereas just the right amount of tent in the right places, and it's, and it's about two pounds, um, especially when you take away, they have they give you 11 of these steaks, I think, and I only use six, so that's a lot of weight right there. Um, and anything extra, I do bring in, I do bring, I, I do use a footprint because I really like the footprint. It just makes setup easier, keeps everything cleaner. It's for me, it's worth three ounces, okay, which is a, which is the weight of a granola bar. However, I was saving weight, so I brought these. These are titanium pins, 
Now this had a problem, okay? Not only did they bend, as you can see, these things you could hammer with a rock into the ground, and the ground there is so dry and full of rocks that you just hit rock. So you could hammer this in and get a good f a foothold. On the Fly Creek, you need a good foothold, as well as any single other si uh, single wall tent. You need something that's gonna really keep the structure together. And in the Fly Creek, in the center on the main beam, like the backbone of it, is like a sail. So if you don't have something holding the sides of that, it's, it's just going to keep pushing it. Um, and this doesn't cut it. This does the job. And this is what comes with the product. So I'm going to be using these from now on. I'm going to be losing. I'm going to have to add four tenths of an ounce to my pack. But it's well worth it with this. Now, with this, what happened was this I used on the, on the Appalachian Trail and the Long Trail, and it worked okay. These work great in soft soil. And where you can push them all the way down, and where this second section, this part right here, becomes a second connector. Because what happens is with the strong wind, and if it's like this, this tends to roll. And then all of a sudden now, you potentially, it can pop off the, 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 uh, the guy line. So I push this down as far as I could. You can't do it in rocky, sandy soil. It's just, it's just, it's just nothing to purchase. It's the way it is. So this is the way I learned, lessons learned. Okay, the next thing is um, digging cat holes. In wilderness camping, you do a lot of cat holes. On the AT, eventually, I was doing a lot of cat holes. I just, you know, the privies got kind of gross. And I start, I brought a dig dig. This is a dig dig tool. This weighs one and a quarter ounces. I actually added this little flagging to it that I found. This blends in with the dirt really easy. I walked away from this more than once and had to go back and find it. Um, so this 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 was this was really great. It has a serration on it. It really, it's 1.2 up to 5 ounces, well worth it, and I put it with my tent spike so it doesn't break, cut anything. It's, 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 it's good, okay? The next piece of equipment is this, <coughs> trekking poles, okay? This is the, these are leaky ultralights. Um, first time I've ever hiked down a through hike without trekking poles, this time, and I was able to do it. My backpack, my backpack is, a, is a 16 pounds with a liter of water and three and a half days of food. Um, and then 11 pounds or less base weight, and uh, I'm really happy with that. I, 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 I cannot believe what a difference that has made, okay? So I would strongly recommend to, to focus on trying to get sub-20 total pack, get under 12 for a base weight, and you can do it. And you can do it when things go on sale, and you don't have to buy a really expensive stuff. Everything I brought was on sale, and it was very reasonable, and it's all high-quality good stuff, okay? All right? So, the next lessons learned was breakfast, food. Okay, let's talk about food. This is what I used to eat. These two of these things, they, they are heavy. Um, well, heavier than just a bar, one three ounce bar. Uh, and I'd add cold water, grip it, and add cold water and eat it. Uh, but the thing is, I found I was, I was getting up an hour before, uh, uh, I was hiking an hour before sunrise, stopping 30 minutes before sunset every day. And that's how I got to do up to 40 miles a day. I really was, believe it or not. I was started around 20, and I was doing 30s for a lot of it, and then in the 40s at the end. Um, and so you can do that, but the thing is you need time, okay? And one of the things I found was I'd wake up, I was cold, I was just cold a lot. It was high elevation, 7,000 to 9,000 feet a lot in the end, and you just get cold. I got cold. Um, so what I would do is I wanted to just, the best way to get warm in the morning when you wake up is get moving. Uh, just pack up and go. It's, I mean, just laying there and just shivering is sounds is, is pretty miserable. So I didn't want to do that. So like that kind of this, I was carrying a lot of this and not eating it because I just it was taking time and I was just didn't want to do that. So what I switched to was uh, these pro pro bars. Um, again, I eat plant based uh, all the time. You know, in in this particular case, when I hike, when I get into town, I do more of a vegetarian diet because I do I will eat a veggie pizza. I just do. Um, and you know, a lot of towns you get into, especially Arizona, good luck trying to find something that's not, not that doesn't have meat base in it. It's just, it's just the way it is. You know, it's a culture, it's the environment. So you have to be flexible. And uh, you know, bean burritos are great. So try to get them as much as you can, but try to get them without cheese. It's next to impossible. But anyways, so this and this. So I eat this right away and eat this, and that's about the same amount of calories and it's less weight. Okay, so those worked out really well. Um, I had about five five bars a day, not including lunch and then the dinner, and everything was cold except for dinner. Okay, the next lesson learned was this. I took this the first night. Every night was because it was less. It was only like three ounces. That and a primal jerky bar, right? It was a protein, and I figured that after out of town, I would have enough 
calories in my system uh, basically to, you know, cover me and then I could have a, l a lower calorie dinner, right? Well, that was a mistake because a Nero on, on that kind of trail is 20 miles. I mean, you're doing 20 miles by noon, okay? So if you get into town by noon and you've done 20 miles, you're freaking hungry. And, you know, you really are. It's, 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 you're, you're starving. You're, eating, you're burning a lot of calories. And you're not eating a lot of calories, comparatively. I mean, again, my three, you can watch my 3,000 calories a day, and that's what I did. So what really worked was this, which is where the couscous. I mixed TVP in here, uh, some cracked chia seeds and flax seeds, and uh, textured vegetable protein, and then cranberries, as well as the, the, the package. This was about 1,000 calories. And the way I, I liked it was was hot. I didn't. I tried it cold, and I just hardly could finish it. Okay. So what I did was, I, as I showed you before, was my my solution was uh, the Sierra Cup titanium Sierra Cup with a um, a tri wing titanium uh, Esbit tri wing. Okay. And then the Esbit fuel cubes. This is four days right here. I used half a cube per night. Worked perfectly. And I put this around it. I put the, uh, the titanium windshield around it, put it around it, put my shoes there to kind of keep it all nice and tight, put it right outside my veranda, uh, sat there, and it would, ju it would just take six to seven minutes to boil 1.6 ounce cups of water, exactly how much it was for the, for the, for the couscous. I pour it in here. Tech tip, you always want to have an extra Ziploc bag because these things will get a leak. So I always had his extra Ziploc bag, um, and I used it almost every single time I got a nail drop, okay? Okay, so that's that. The other thing was um, sleeping bags. This is my sleeping bag, which is the Nemo Salsa 30 degree bag. That doesn't mean you're comfortable to 30 degrees, uh, but uh, I was pretty comfortable till about, till about 35 degrees, um, and then I needed uh, some help. And that's when I got the, uh, my, my wife to send me the, uh, my Cocoon uh, silk liner, and that was great. Uh, and that worked out just fine. I wish I had lessons learned. If I did it again, I would have my frog tog rain pants, which is like wind pants, they're very light, um, as an extra layer above my uh, smart wool. I wore smart wool pants and top, um, and that, that was good. I did send home my smart wool uh, beanie. Uh, I used a, I had a buff, I have a buff, and I used a buff and my, my puff jacket, which is the Permaloft, Eleanor Bean Permaloft puff jacket which I had a top on, and I found that adequate during the day and at night. And uh, during the day I used a sun hat, a runner's hat, an outdoor research runner's hat, with, with, which was draped around, and I had sunglasses. Um, absolutely a requirement. It, you have to have that stuff. It, in a place like Arizona, or where you're exposed, even like Colorado or the PCT, um, the, 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 the exposure alone wears you out. It, it just burns through you. It's not, so I had long sleeves and long pants at all times, no matter what the temperature, um, because I really just felt I needed it. The sun and the wind, and the only time you're protected from is when you're in a tent. And if you're out out in the environment for 12 to 14 hours a day, um, it just wears on you. It's part of the you know part of that exhaustion. That and you're really not, even though you're drinking as much as you think you need to, you're really not getting as much because it's just not that much water on the trail. Again, thank you for the trail angels, right? Those are my lessons learned. Uh, mail drops work great. Um, one thing I would say about mail drops, if you're going from someplace like Massachusetts to Arizona, um, it doesn't take three or four days to get it. It takes more like five to six days to get it. So give yourself a week when you ship it to get to the post office or the destination. Oftentimes, it was general delivery and you shipped it to a hotel or a hostel. It didn't go there. It would go to the post office and they held it for you. And you have to go in and, you know, a few times you have to show your ID. Uh, or you had to show your tracking number. So take a picture of the track. Whoever is shipping it to you should take a picture of the tracking number receipt and, and text it to you so you have it, um, especially Flagstaff. Flagstaff, it's a requirement. They won't give you anything without it, okay? Hopefully this was helpful. Um, you know, I did have some lessons learned and hopefully shared. Again, comments are great. Thumbs up, subscribe. If you do have comments, you know, just keep them constructive so that we can all learn and talk about it, and it's great to be helpful. All right? Thanks a lot. Bye.